Hi everybody, thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you just one method of modeling the process of ionic bond formation between different sets of metals and nonmetals. Let's start off by quickly reviewing how ionic bonding works. In the last video, we said that metal atoms transfer their valence electrons to nonmetal atoms. This creates ions, and those ions are oppositely charged, so they are attracted to one another. Specifically, we looked at the example of sodium and bromine. Sodium, the metal, will transfer or lose its valence electron to bromine, the nonmetal. This changes the electron configuration so that each is stable. More importantly, they both now get a charge, opposite charges, so they're attracted to one another with an electrostatic attraction, what we officially call an ionic bond. So our challenge now is going to be to come up with a quick and easy way to model this process, something that you can do with just a piece of paper and pen or pencil. So I'm going to show you just one method that's really good at doing this, also good at making predictions about certain things, like the different charges of your cations and anions, how many cations and anions there's going to be, the quantities of electrons transferred, even the formula of the ionic compound itself. At more advanced levels, you could also use this to predict some of the observable properties of the compound, but we're not going to get to that in this video. So for the first example, I'm going to show you this modeling process for the ionic bond formation between sodium and chlorine. I'm going to do it nice and slow, and it's the only one this video will feature, just in case this is anybody's first time seeing something like this. So the first step, and probably the most important step, is to write the electron dot diagram for each atom involved. So I've got sodium with one dot for its one valence electron, and chlorine with seven for its seven valence electrons. Notice I use dots and x's. I highly recommend doing the same thing for your models. This way you can keep track of which electrons came from which atom. It's also really important that you know how to figure out how many valence electrons each atom has. I filled in one and seven, but you have to do this for yourself when creating your own models. There's two methods. One of them we covered in the last video, and it involves writing out the entire electron configuration for each atom you can do this and it always will work, but it can be pretty time consuming. For most atoms, we have a shortcut that simply involves looking at the column each atom is in. Sodium is in this first column on the periodic table. All of those atoms have one valence, so I can skip straight to putting one dot. Chlorine is in this column. All the atoms in this column of the periodic table have seven valence, so I can skip straight to putting in chlorine's seven valence electrons. I'm going to actually keep the two electron configurations for each atom here beneath their dot diagrams. You don't have to do this every time, but I'm going to refer back to that later as we complete the model. So the next thing you need after your dot diagrams are in place is a way to show how the electron moves from the metal to the nonmetal. And on a piece of paper with just a pen or pencil, there's really only one way you can do that, and that is to draw an arrow showing which electron moves and where it goes to. Just make sure it's always the electrons from the metal that leave and go to these empty spaces of the dot diagram on the nonmetal. And for this one, that's the only arrow I have to draw because sodium only had one valence to lose and chlorine only had one blank spot to fill up. Now we've got one final step to complete this model, which is to draw what each of these atoms turns into after the electron moves. Sodium turns into our cation with a plus one charge. You know it's a plus one because it lost one negative electron. Chlorine, now with that extra dot, that extra electron, becomes our anion, negative one. We know it's negative one because it gained one electron. Let's also just take a quick moment to remind ourselves that without that 3s1, sodium now has the configuration of neon, making it stable with 3p5 and that extra electron going to 3p6. Chlorine has the electron configuration of argon, making it stable, which is again the entire point of the bonding process. That pretty much finishes off this model. The, really, the only other thing you could do is come up with the formula for the compound. Just count how many of each ion we produced. In this case, it's just one sodium, one chlorine, making the formula for this substance NaCl. So that actually completes this modeling process. Look for additional and more challenging examples in the next video. Here's a brief summary.